Yeah, welcome again at my channel and welcome back at E2E Designs. 20 years ago I made this dragon helmet. Yes, I'm that freaking old, but that's not what I like to talk about. I like to talk about the helmet because some of you asked how I did these three-dimensional horns and 20 years ago that was absolutely difficult for me because I had no super special machines. I had to form and laminate these horns by hand and I had to do the left and the right side exactly the same shape which was the difficulty and these horns are hollowed so the helmet is super lightweight but now 20 years later we have these super fancy machines they are cheap affordable for everybody we can use free software free for private use so i thought why not doing another helmet i like to do the paint job pro style that means i have to disassemble the helmet and i have to remove every part from the helmet shell that differs a little bit from helmet model to helmet model and what I removed is the inner styrofoam shell, all the foam parts, all the rubber parts, all the nuts and bits, the shield until only the bare fiberglass shell is left. And if you don't know what to do or if you are afraid to disassemble your helmet, there's also an option to mask the helmet with masking tape. I have to use also some masking tape because the straps are riveted to the shell and I don't want to destroy these rivets because of safety reasons. So I mask the straps and I'm good to go. And next I have to remove the old paint job because it's already flaking and I want to stick the ears direct on the glass fiber shell. And you have three options. The cheapest one is to use wet sanding paper. I recommend 320 grit. Just sand the surface of the helmet. It will take forever, but it's cheap. Not so cheap is an orbital sander. Link in the description if you want to use mine. And it goes fast. But you have a risk of damaging the shell if you sand too fast in the material. So be careful when sanding. Or we can do my favorite media blasting and that's what I like to do. Yeah, let's talk about how to make the ears while the helmet gets stripped. And I'm doing 3D printing and using these two cool machines. That's the GTESH Alkyte, a 2K resin printer, super affordable, only $99. And that's the GTESH washing and curing station, also super affordable, around about $120. And the build volume of the printer is 190 by 130 by 82 millimeter, perfect to do my ears. Let me show you a solution which is so super simple that you don't need absolutely no 3D building skills. I'm using ZBrush Core Mini, a free 3D sculpting software. You can find a link in the video description if you want to download it yourself. And when you open ZBrush you start with a sphere like this and now it gets absolutely simple. Check this brush, that's the chisel brush, click on the chisel brush and now you have a lot of things like noses, eyes and also ears and I'm using the ear 0.1. I click on the ear, I turn the sphere to the side and now I can place an ear like so. Super simple and boom we have the ears. Okay, there's one thing more I have to do because I need only one ear, so I have to cut the sphere from the ear. <laughs> and to do that, I'm using Fusion 360 Autodesk Fusion, also free for private use, if you want to use it as well without spending any money. And what I did is, I cut off the sphere, like shown here, and now I have only one ear and that's exactly in the shape of the helmet and I can print it and stick it direct onto the helmet. I saved the cutoff of the ear as an SDL on my hard drive. Now I open the G2Box slicer which is free for use. It comes with the printer. I load the ear into G2Box. Here it is. And now I have to do one thing. I have to hollow the ear. And that means it's not a solid shape. It's hollowed inside and that makes it lightweight, perfect for a helmet. Let's check the top view and here you can see that the ear is hollowed out. It's not a solid shape. Now save the file as a CTP on your USB stick and we can put it into the printer. To set up the printer I installed a resin tank on the LCD display and tightened the two resin tank screws on both sides. 
I installed the build plate to the C-axis and tightened the big screw on top. I opened the tool menu, the level menu, I pressed the home button to level the build plate. Then I have to push my fingers on the build plate and I have to tighten these four screws crosswise to level the build plate. I fill the resin tank with the resin to the maximum. I put on the UV screen and the printer is ready to print. My first two prints were not successful and failed. The resin didn't stick to the build plate and stayed in the resin tank and I found out that the build plate is much too slick because it's anodized and the resin didn't stick to the anodizing so I sanded the build plate with 3 tranny grid until all anodizing is gone and then I was able to print successful. And that's my first 3D printed ear made with the GTESH Archite resin printer. Now I have to wash the ear and the resin I used is water washable so I filled the washing machine with water. I set the timer to 10 minutes, push the start button and the washing machine stirs the water automatically and that creates a good flow around the object and a good washing. Then I have to cure the print so I installed the turntable, placed my print on top I installed the UV shield, set the timer again to 10 minutes and cured the print with UV light. I had to do some minor adjustments of the ears to fit them to the helmet. Now it's perfect and we are ready to put them on the helmet. And to glue the ears on the helmet I'm using two component epoxy resin. I'm using also some thixotrophic powder and some shredded fiberglass. I start to mix the resin and the hardener and in my case the mixing ratio is 10 to 4. 10 parts of the resin and 4 parts of the hardener. Now I add some of the shredded fiberglass and what I like to do is I like to do a kind of glue, a thick uh, paste and to create the thick paste I can use the thixotrophic powder. So I have not only resin, I have a kind of glue where I can glue these ears on the helmet. My paste must be a bit thicker so I add the thixotrophic powder and that's the magic powder which makes the glue. So let's put some in. And this paste gets thicker and thicker as you can see.
And in the meantime, I can search for the perfect skin tone while the hybrid primer cures in the paint booth. And my skin tone is a mixture between Snow White and Miss Piggy. So I decided to mix these two tones together for my perfect skin tone. 20 hours later, I have to flatten the hybrid primer with 600 grit wet sanding paper and wet sandra my wet sanding bucket. Yeah, the skin color is on the helmet, but I'm not done. Now I have to do all the details, some suntan, all the veins, and that's what I do with my airbrushes and some airbrush color. I load the color in spray guns, and then I have fun on this meat cap. Yeah, the skin is on, but there's one last important thing I need to do, and that's the application of a two-component high-solid matte clear coat, and that's what I'm doing in the paint booth. 